Hello, my soccer universe. To the review of the first Bundesliga round, and we as always add in a little bit of Austria as well. And yes, I am wearing Dortmund, but Dortmund did not have the most impressive result. That was reserved to the reigning champions, Bayern Munich. To be honest, I said it last week, um, Bayern is probably gonna roll over Schalke, that it will be 8-0. No, I did not expect that. I thought that Schalke will uh, shut up shop, but that's exactly what they didn't do. Uh, they want to be a nicely playing side, they want to play out from the back, and then uh, Bayern is just rolling over them. Uh, you would expect a 3-0 down at the half. I mean, already with the second goal from Goretzka, more or less broke them. Gnabry opened the scoring. Lewandowski with a bit of a penalty. At 3-0, you gotta play with uh, 11 men deep. No, they continued, continued. And yeah, Bayern had fun with Gnabry. Müller, Sané uh, scoring for fun. I think uh, the um, uh, Müller goal was uh, the nice one. It was a really fast counter attack, and then even uh, Musiala, who had never heard before, gets in on the action. Gnabry scoring three for first. No, it was the second Gnabry goal. That was the one. Uh, Leroy Sané uh, assisting. It was just they were having fun scoring goals. Um, of the other games, I mean, I watched the conference most of the time, and um, you know, I don't know if you if you know, but in Germany, you can uh, in Austria, they have the, the call it conference, so that's why I say conference, where you have on one channel they switch back and forth between the games, and you know, when a goal is scored, it's a tour in whatever town, and then they switch over. Or most oh, most of the time, you hope to see that live. So uh, that's pretty neat way of following uh, the match there. A little bit like the red zone channel in the NFL. Frankfurt, Bielefeld. Uh, Frankfurt looked all right, uh, jersey-wise. Although you know, I saw some a few things that I was not so fond of. But on the field, they missed many, many chances, and so it was Bielefeld who actually took the lead through Suku in the 51st. Andre Silva equalized, but had a got a headache from that because after he hit the ball, uh, some uh, defender smashed in him with the head. That did, not, that did not look good. Um, Silva also missed a uh, big one in the first half where he back it and maybe was a little bit too fancy at that point. Uh, Köln Hoffenheim. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna make a Bundesliga jersey review soon. Köln Hoffenheim. Uh, Köln a little bit shoot, shooting themselves, themselves in foot. I mean, Hector playing a ball back to Kramaric gets in the fourth minute. They get the equalizer through Anderson, but a penalty. Yeah, I think it was a penalty, uh, makes it 2-1 uh, for Hoffenheim at the half. Again, they can uh, equalize late. I think Drexler already missed a big one uh, or set up a big chance that was missed, but uh, he gets the equalizer, but it's deep in stoppage time. Kramaric, in his last two Bundesliga games, he scored seven goals for a Dortmund and it's a 3-2 win for Hoffenheim. Stuttgart also shot themselves in full. I mean, uh, yes, they're coming up. They they actually also want to play nice, but Freiburg was just way too um, you know experienced. They have the Bundesliga experience, and so Peterson gets them the first goal. Uh, Stuttgart then play forward, get try to get get something right into that uh, from a free kick. Uh, Salai uh, puts pull, 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 I think it was a nice back heel. Um, the, the, goal, the goal is there, it falls right to Salah and it's 2 nil. Honestly, Stuttgart was not, the, was not worse, they were just uh, bad on the back. Vincenzo Grifo, 3 nil right after the halftime. And that, you thought, brought the neck of Stuttgart, but they came back and they scored two more through Kalajic and Waman Giduka. Waman Giduka, that's a, a, a name. A uh, handful, a mouthful. That's what the one would say. That's a mouthful of a name. And it ends 3-2. They even had the chance to equalize, but Freiburg holds on. Augsburg gets a rather messy win at Union with not really having much chances, but being deadly. Vargas scores uh, Gregoric after uh, Bulta made it 1-1, uh, which probably would have been the deserved shot, but Gregoric gets another one and then Hahn uh, late, so the autos were scored in the last 10 minutes. Werder, um, out of nowhere, goes one goal down and then two goals down. Uh, this was one of those performances where you really ask yourself, oh, where is this coming from? 
from Hertha, Pekarik and Luke Bakke. I mean, the goal by Luke Bakke was really, really well taken. And also, I have to say, those away jerseys by Hertha for, for, for look somewhat right. Cunha makes it 3 0, and you know, uh, Werder, similar to Stuttgart, you know, if you don't have the luck, you don't have the luck. Selke gets uh, one, one, one back by Cordova, uh, makes it 4 1 late. And then the big one. Dortmund Gladbach, where Gladbach was in the first half really frustrating Dortmund. It was a rather even game with few chances and actually I think the better chance fell to Gladbach. Um, but as it so often goes, uh, one goal makes the difference. And it was the one goal where Bellingham assists Reina, two 17-year-olds, to make it 1-0 for Dortmund. Uh, where they've that was the one chance where Gladbach, uh, the, the one time that Gladbach actually a little bit broke uh, in their defensive uh, rigidity. And that kind of a little bit changed the dynamic of the game. Gladbach could not hold back anymore and then in the second half it was all Dortmund. And Haaland, who got so frustrated at first, I, I always thought he, he I know he plays the big uh, brother for Gio Reyna, but he was clearly frustrated with, with him because he wanted to get the balls a little bit more uh, from, from him. They get a penalty where the trailing leg of Benzebaini gets into, um, I think it was Sancho, uh, which then, yeah, you have to say it was a penalty. Uh, Sancho wanted to take it himself, but hands down the ball to Holland. He said, I want to score, and he gets onto the scoring sheet. And that decided the game. Uh, and then with a great count counter take against Sancho and Holland. I mean, the ball came from a corner kick uh, where Sancho gets the ball and uh, Holland with a sprint uh storms into the box it gets perfectly timed to to him and he makes a great finish to make it three nil when dortmund are rolling and with these young talents in front they are a really 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 fun team to watch have to see how this will continue but it was a lot of fun to see dortmund play to be honest uh yesterday's games leipzig 3-1 over Mainz was the expected uh win uh, forsberg paulsen uh, made it clear early at uh, 17 and 20, 21st. Uh, Mateta put one back right after, but then had Hadar made 3 1, and that was that. And then Wolfsburg Le Leverkusen, yeah, was not the greatest game. I actually found that in Wolfsburg played in the darker green, and the, but still with the bright socks. Uh, there were chances there on both sides, but not many. It was a rather uh, boring game. And so, with that, the first Bundesliga table, yeah, Bayern 8 0 up, shall we call it? Shall we call it? Uh, I don't think so yet, but I expect this season Bayern to be a rather comfortable champion. Dortmund will be exciting, but I think Dortmund's frailties um, and inexperience will ultimately cost them. I don't think that Leipzig, having lost uh, Timo Werner, although I'm not a big fan of his per se, uh, they have lost too much, I think. I think it is Bayern and then the rest. This is how it will uh, pan out this season. There will not be this uh, tight title race uh, coming. Uh, I think the relegation battle and the Champions League battle will be a lot more exciting because let's see who will get in there, to be honest. Uh, the favorites, as you can see, is Dortmund, Leipzig, uh, and then Leverkusen and Gladbach. But I think there are a host of teams that, if they have a good season, they could get, get, get in there. I'm talking about your Frankfurt, if they could, could, could uh, get something on. Hoffenheim, I think, has a uh, shot uh, there as well. I wouldn't even count out Hertha. If they continue to be clinical, maybe there's a chance that they could get in. But it is always, in the Bundesliga, the relegation battle is the far more interesting one. And you see there's are many teams, uh, st uh, starting from Bielefeld, we have Union Berlin in there, we have Schalke big time in there at the moment. I think Schalke will be, might be the big name that goes down, <sighs> which I like Schalke, so um, yeah. I might hold off on the Schalke jersey purchase. As you see, uh, except for Bayern, I have my favorite German teams down there. <laughs> And they all are probably going to be towards the bottom end of the table, so nah, not too happy about that. Next round, let's start out with an interesting one. Hertha against Frankfurt on Friday. Um, I think Leverkusen Leipzig is probably the pick of the bunch. Uh, Schalke Bremen is going to be one that, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 
not gonna be. I don't want to say if it's not gonna be a good game, but there are not good teams playing there. And yeah, Hoffenheim Bayern. There was something. Yes, there was something all oh, not too long ago. Uh, briefly, Austria. Uh, Salzburg goes a man down and a goal down and turns the game around uh, with 10 men. So um, that basically tells you everything about their um, strength within the league. Um, I thought they had a chance, there, there was a chance at the drop No, in the sixth minute they got the red card. Yeah, so in the 30 30, it is 1 0 out on the 35th penalty equalized, and then it goes. 4-1 uh, with goals from Koita Christ, and Christian. The one from Koita, he's just... Uh, no, the, the one from Daka, to make it 2-1. Koita is running, 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 running. No one stops and puts it uh, across the goal. And then uh, was the easiest goal for Daka. Uh, Sturm and Rapid play out a 1-1 one, one draw, where um, actually Sturm took the lead. Uh, Rapid could then equalize through, through Damir, but you know, was probably the expected result. It was not true for uh, Tirol against Lusk. Lusk started the game uh, storming. You thought they will eat uh, Tirol alive and then, or in the fifth minute, they make a stupid... Uh, they are not careful in defense. And suddenly Fred Fredriksen, who comes from Juve, after Yeboa assists, and I was wondering if he has any relations to Anthony Yeboa, uh, makes it 1-0 for Tirol. That was pretty rough. Lusk then controls the game, really plays nice to the eye, but uh, on the back, and I, this is unusual because we used to have the best defense over the past two seasons, they are a little bit open. They have chances uh, through Ramftl going wide, uh, but it's apparently through Ra Ragus that gives the equalizer, then a huge chance before they have to make it 2-1. It's not gonna happen. Second half, Suddenly, Tirol makes some adjustment and Lusk doesn't get a grip on the game anymore. It is rather even with not many chances. And I think a big chance fell to Tirol, who could have decided in the 80th, but there were also two big chances then for Lusk laid on. It ends 1-1, one, one, points dropped, honestly. Uh, but you know, it's at the beginning of the season, we cut the points in half. I, top six is what I want to have for now and not being too far off uh, second place and then in, then you can make it. It will take some time under the new coach. He wants to play a slightly different way and be more flexible, also be more controlling on the ball and you can see this still takes some work and it will take some time to get adjusted to that. So I'm willing to give them uh, the time and I know it might be a difficult start. And yeah, now look look at the Europa League draw. I think Tunas Castreda you gotta beat, uh, but then probably against Sporting. Although we beat them last year in the Europa League, um, it might not work because it will be only one off away game, and it might not be the worst to not play in the Europa League to get the system right. But you know, uh, I would be happy if they do. The result of the round is clearly St. Burton uh, demolishing Admira 5-0, uh, which is a statement of intent, I have to say. Um, the four signs are important that they will not be considered among the, uh, the relegation teams and Admira falling apart. I think already er early in the season, they were the odds on favorites to go down. Wolfsburg gets a uh, labored win 2-0 at Hartberg. And Austria Wien uh, also. Uh, Ried will be a tough out for anyone. They are a hard fighting team and it took two penalties from Monshine uh, to take Reed down. The win was probably in the end um, deserved, but it was not easy for Austria Wien to get that win uh, at all. And so if we look now at the current standings, and this is now the second round, so we will see a little bit flip-flopping around. Uh, Lask stays, <laughs> Lask and the Orbs, uh, who played uh, stay, uh, stable. Uh, but you know, Salzburg is already in the lead, you see already seven goals scored. Um, it's gonna be ugly, I, I think, because they could keep the team together. Salzburg is a really, really good team, unfortunately, I have to say. Um, I'm curious how everything else will pan out. Um, you would expect that Salzburg, Rapid, Lusk, Wolfsburg are going into the top four. So there are two spots left. And I think that race will be an interesting one. Um, I hope that it will remain that those four are the big favorites uh, and then the rest uh, plays for it. Uh, if you look at the next round, um, 
the big one is five o'clock on Sunday, Lusk against Wolfsburg. And that's a game where I have, I'm a little bit afraid of, to be honest, because that is a game that we lost both home games last season. Now we are playing in a big stadium and we can, we can have some spectators. Although I have to see how this will develop because the situation in Austria is right on the edge. Uh, other interesting games, I think a read against Salzburg. I want to see how Reed is doing against Salzburg. To, 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 to be honest, I would expect goals between Austria and Admira. That would be the game where Austria win really has to show what they were, what they were. When St. Pölten Rapid is an early slipper. And then as a Western Derby in Alltag in Tirol. Anyway, let me know uh, what you saw from these two leagues. I was actually thinking briefly if I shouldn't add the Eredivisie also now here, but I think for this season I will keep them with Great Britain. But uh, all three leagues tend to end on Sunday in the early afternoon and that makes for a very nice roundup video. So watch this space. Maybe Eredivisie will come in here too, which also would make a little bit geographic sense. Anyway, let, let me know what you watch from Bundesliga or if you even can watch Austrian Bundesliga. I would be interested what you hear from there. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed uh, this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.